guys, I'm Katie from Addicted to DIY, and today's project involves one of my favorite desserts, pie. I'm partnering with Inventables to show you how to create and carve these wooden pie boxes. They're a perfect way to store and transport your pies to your holiday gatherings or give them as gifts. I'm going to be showing you how to create the pie box on Inventables free easel software, as well as how to carve and assemble it using the XCarve CNC router. Easel is a design and carving software available for free on the Inventables website. The software is extremely easy to use and there are a ton of projects others have shared on their site to help you get started. They also have a number of carving designs under the Icons tab, and also design generators under the Apps tab. To design a box, we're going to click on the Apps tab and click on the Box Generator. Before we get started designing our box though, we need to confirm the thickness of the material we're carving. The exact thickness needs to be set up an easel for the box generator to size everything properly. To do this, measure your material in multiple areas. You'd be surprised at how much of a difference in thickness there is from one spot to another on a sheet of plywood. Once you have measured the thickness on all sides, input the thickest measurement you took. In this case, my thickest measurement on this 1 quarter inch Baltic birch is 0.245 inches. I'm also going to set the dimensions of the piece of wood that I'm carving. In this case, the x-axis is 20 inches wide and the y-axis is 30 inches long. We'll now head over to the box generator and get started making our box. A standard pie plate is 9 inches in diameter, so we need to make sure our box is big enough to fit that. Through some trial and error, I figured out that about 11 inches is perfect. The height of the box can vary depending on the types of pie you plan on making. Because of the fact that this Baltic birch is really close to a quarter inch thick, I'm actually going to make the dimensions of the pie box 11 and a quarter inches by 11 and a quarter inches. So you'll set the width of the pie box at 11 and a quarter inches and the height at 11 and a quarter inches as well. For the depth, this is going to be how tall your pie box is. I'm going to set it at 3.25 inches. You can see that I now have a bottom of the box, sides of the box, and a front and a back. I need a top for the box, so I'm going to click the box that adds a top to it. You can see that now we have a top added as well as there are grooves here for the top of the box to slide into. We're going to click Import, and it'll show us all of the pieces of the box. You can see the dotted line is the cutting area that I have, so I need to position all of these pieces to fit within that area. I'll start with moving the top of the box over, and also moving the bottom of the box. This taller part you can see is the back of the box, and this shorter part is the front of the box. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move all of these pieces out of the way. These two pieces right here are the sides of the box. You can see that the gray shaded area isn't cut all the way through, and that's the grooves for the box top to slide through. We're going to move one of these out of the way because there's things that we have to do to the sides of the box to ensure that the top slides in properly. The box generator on Inventables is really great, but I found that the top of the box, this thin piece of material that's left over right here, is actually too thin and it ends up breaking a lot of the time. So what I've figured out is how to modify the box to be able to have more material up at the top, so that way we don't risk anything breaking when you slide the top of the box in. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually move this groove right here down a little bit. I found that for me the magic number is about seven spaces. So you can see that the groove has been moved down 
but you can also see that where it's cut right here is now above where the groove is. So we need to alter the box slightly more to be able to accommodate to allow the top to slide in. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit the points on the box. Double click the box and you'll see a lot of these dots appear. Zoom in even further and you can see that we actually need to grab this top point up here and bring it down just slightly so that it's equal to the bottom level of this groove. So you're going to click and drag and then what we need to do is we also need to do the same here. Now you can see the red line, so once the red line snaps even, then we know that we've lowered it to the proper level. We can uncheck the box and see that now this bottom line is equal to the bottom of this groove. Rather than trying to alter the other side of the box, what I always do is I copy it, and I paste it and then right click and flip it horizontally. So this gives us both sides of the box and I know that they're exactly the same as far as the depth of the groove and the height of the front of the box. We'll move this one out of the way and next we need to alter the very front of the box which is this shorter piece right here. I'm going to bring it down and I'm actually going to make sure that the bottom of this box side or the front of the box and the bottom of the side of the box are exactly the same point. So what I'll do is I'm going to highlight the bottom the side of the box, click on shape, and I'm going to set it so that it is 1 inch above the y axis. So this raises the side of the box up by 1 inch. I'm also going to highlight this one, move it over, and then I'm going to do the same thing here and set the y-axis at one inch. You can see here that the top of this box is now a little bit higher than this one, so we also need to alter it to make sure that you can slide the box top in over the front of the box. Otherwise, the box top will just hit the front and you won't be able to slide it in. To make it easier, we're going to zoom in even further and we're going to double click on the front portion of the box. Again, we're going to grab the edit the points and grab it and move it down so that it's about equal with the bottom of the groove right here. You want to make sure because of the fact that you can move it back and forth that your red line is completely vertical. Next we'll zoom out and move over and we're going to make sure that the other side of the box top or the box front is level. So we're going to grab it and move down and you can see that the red line snaps it into place so that we know that it's perfectly vertical and perfectly horizontal. Once these pieces are set we can begin positioning the box pieces over the material to ensure that all of them cut on the same piece. We're going to delete this other side of the box and move it out of the way. We're going to position the bottom of the box so that way it's far enough off of the edges of the material that we don't risk hitting any of the clamps. I like to position it about three quarters of an inch away from home. Next I'm going to position the top of the box First I want to rotate it by 90 degrees and then I'm going to move it down. So where these two pieces, this lip is on each side is actually the front of the box. To make it easier to, to place the design on top, I actually am going to flip it over. So that way when I'm looking at the box right now, this is how I'll be looking at the box when I'm looking at the front of it. This allows me to position the design over it right side up rather than flipping the design and then try to position it. For the rest of the pieces, I'm going to turn them at a 90 degree angle to maximize how much of the material I'm using.
Now that all the pieces are positioned for the box, you can see over here how it's going to look when it's cut out on the plywood. We're going to be using an eighth inch bit and we're going to be using an eighth inch straight bit in order to carve this design. You can see that when you generate a detailed preview, it shows you that it's going to cut all the way through the material and it's going to show you where the grooves are going to be cut for the top to slide in. When you click simulate, it'll show you about how long it's going to take to carve it, which is about 38 minutes. Next, if you want to add a design to the top, what you can do is you can either create a design using text and icons, or you can upload your own designs. I've already created a design for the top, so I'm going to grab that from another file that I created. So I'm going to click over to this easel file, and I'm going to grab this design that I created. I'm going to hit copy. And I'm going to paste it over here onto this design. So you can see that it's kind of lined up in here, but I really want to get it centered and positioned exactly right. Normally, you can hit the center button right here, but because of the fact that all of these are individual designs, it'll actually center them all on top of each other. So in this instance, what you're going to do is you're just going to eyeball it. So I think about right there is where I want the design to go. Now you can see that right here, that this masked design right here is actually overlapping the outside cut of the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight the top and bring it to front. That way we can ensure that the entire border of the top is going to be carved out completely. You can either leave your design as is, or you can add a little finger hole right here to be able to allow you to open the box up. What you do for that is you add a circle icon and you size it appropriately. I size it at about three quarters of an inch, and then I move it into position. With this, you can highlight the circle and the outside border of the box top, and you can center them. Then what you want to do is you want to make sure that this is cutting all the way through. You can either have it fill, which adds quite a bit of time, or you can have it card on, carve on the outside. You just want to make sure that you're not using tabs on this because it's really not necessary. Now for the box top and the sides, it's imperative that you use tabs or that you use double-sided tape to stick your entire surface down. I personally prefer to use the tabs because the double-sided tape can tend to gum up the router bits. So you can see that it already has a preset length and a height for the tabs and a quantity of four. You can up that or lower that however you like. For me, I like to use four tabs and then I position them where I'd like them to go. You're going to follow these same steps on the rest of the box to ensure that every piece has tabs. And you want to make sure that you position them so that it's easy for you to cut these tabs once the box has been cut. Once all the tabs have been set, the box is essentially ready to be cut. Now you can see that when you generate a detailed preview, that using the 8th inch bit isn't going to carve this entire design that I've created. So there's two ways you can go about this. You can either not carve the design, or you can move it over to another window and do a dual stage cut. What you do for that is you highlight the design. It's going to highlight that outside border of the box top, so you hit shift and click on it and it'll deselect that box. Next you're going to hit copy, you're going to open this new window down below, and you're going to paste it, the design onto this blank document. The design is actually pasted exactly where it was over here, so you can now delete this 
and know that when you carve this design, it's going to be carved exactly where it should be on the box top. And I'll show you an example of that. I'll cut it and I'll paste it back here and you can see it's exactly where we left it. I'm going to bring it back over to this document and there's two cutting bits that you can use to cut this. You can either use a 1 16th inch bit and you can see on the generated preview that it's going to carve the entire design. Another option that you can use, which I really prefer, is a 90 degree bit. This is only available on Easel Pro, which is a subscription based program that they just released this past week. Looking at the generated preview, you can see the different dimension that it has using the 90 degree, degree bit versus the 1 16th inch bit. It actually drastically cuts down on the amount of time it takes to also carve this design. Right now it's at about 10 minutes with the 90 degree bit. With the 1 16th inch bit, you can see that you still get a very detailed design but the carving time is doubled, doubled to about 21 minutes. To carve this design, what you're going to do first is you're going to carve it, you're going to carve the design first, and then you'll carve out the box. So in this instance, what I did was I put my 90 degree bit in the router and carved the design out, and then as soon as it was done, I shut the router off, put in my eighth inch bit, and then carved out the box. So now we're ready to send this to the X-Carve. I set up my X-Carve with a 90 degree V bit, clamped my material to the wasteboard, and began carving the design on the top of the box. Once the design was finished carving, I raised the spindle and replaced the V-bit with a 1 8 inch straight bit to carve the pieces of the box. When the pieces of the box were carved, I used a box cutter to cut the tabs to free the pieces from the plywood sheet. I sanded the box pieces down with 220 grit sandpaper to prep them for assembly. I glued up all of the pieces of the box using Rapid Fuse wood glue, then taped the sides and bottom together while the glue dried. Once the glue was dry, I peeled off the tape and finished the top. I used black acrylic paint to paint inside the carved area to make it pop against the light color of the wood. When the paint was dry, I sanded it down to remove any excess paint on the top of the lid and clean up the design. At this point, you can either choose to leave the box as is, or you can finish it with a clear coat such as polycrylic. For the walnut box, I finished it with mineral oil to bring out the color of the wood. Whether you're making pie boxes just like these, creating keepsake boxes for vacation memories, or making gift boxes for friends and loved ones, you can use the modifications I showed you to make a beautiful box of any size on the X-Carve. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial today. And again, thank you to Inventables for partnering with me on this project. For all of the project details, including links to the files, please visit my website, addictedtodiy.com. Also, for more tutorials just like this one, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and also subscribe to my email list. Thanks again.